Changing your name in Texas can feel like a very daunting process. However, the process itself is rather simple. A caveat is if you're changing your name because of marriage or divorce or you're tr attempting to change the name of a minor, the process is completely different. Especially if you're doing a divorce, you're going to want to do your final decree, have your name change in there so that the judge can order it that way. Uh, and minors have an entirely different form, an entirely different system. But if you're trying to change your name as an adult, there is a really good resource on Texas eFile self-help that will walk you through every step of the way. In order to find it, you can Google Texas eFile self-help name change of an adult, and it's going to take you to a page that has several different offers of what they call interviews. They call them interviews because they're going to ask questions every step of the way to help you fill out the forms that you need. You're going to choose the family law cases out of the interview selections, and it's going to narrow down to the name change of an adult. In order to submit and file a name change of an adult, you're going to need to prepare a petition, an order, and if you want to avoid paying the court fees because you cannot pay them, an inability to pay waiver. You're also going to need to get a fingerprint card, but we'll talk about how to get one of those later. So first, when you're in the e-file self-help system, it's going to ask you questions like, what is your current legal name, your social security number, you have a driver's license, your driver's license number. It's also going to ask you if you've ever been charged with a misdemeanor, class A or class B, or a felony. If you've been charged with a misdemeanor of class A or class B, you're gonna wanna have what the charge was, your cause number, and what county that you were charged in. If you were charged with a felony, you're going to need to have proof that you were either pardoned or that you have been out of prison or off probation for two years. There's some additional documentation that you'll need to provide and it's listed there. After you've done fill out all of those questions, it is going to ask you the reason that why you were changing your name. Now this sometimes can be a little scary for folks, especially for those in the LGBT community. You can put whatever reason is both true and most comfortable for you. You don't need to go into a whole lot of detail. It also says on the form, briefly describe. Uh, they just want to know that your changing of your name is not going to be harmful to state and will be better for you. They want to make sure that you are not trying to avoid any legal or financial responsibilities through changing your name. If you are changing your name because you are a trans person or non-binary, you might want to put reasons having to do with this is the name that you go by and having that name be on your legal records is easier for everyone to evolve, involved. Or you might want to say this is the name that you've been using because of separation of family. All of those things are good reasons. If you want to put it, that it is also because you are non-binary or you are trying to find a name that is more comfortable for you, that is completely valid as well. Keep in mind, for filing a name change only, you're going to need to file it into whatever county that you live in. If you're filing a name change and a gender marker change, you're going to have a slightly different process as well, as well as some diff a different documentation, like a letter from a medical professional or therapist. And you're going to want to file that into Travis County because that county is easier to get those things through. So just keep in mind what county you are going to be filing in when answering these questions. Now after you've gone through all of the questions, it's going to automatically fill for you the petition and the order. And then it is going to ask you if you want to fill out an inability to pay waiver. The court fees for a name change of an adult is typically $150 to $300 depending on the county. If that is something that you cannot pay, filling out the inability to pay waiver is a complicated and a bit annoying process, but definitely worth it. In order to fill out the waiver, you're going to need a complete list of your expenses, debts, and incomes throughout the month. Now keep in mind, if you don't have exact numbers for all of the categories of the expenses, it's completely reasonable. Just do a really good faith guess. 
it's going to have very detailed categories like clothing um, or laundry or auto repairs. And you might find and think to yourself, well, I don't buy clothing every month. I don't repair my car every month. Think on a yearly basis. If you don't buy clothing every month, about how much do you buy a year? Or how much do you spend on laundry? Everybody buys detergent or may go to a laundromat or might have dryer sheets, those sorts of things too that we just don't think about typically. Take all of that that you would usually spend in a year and then divide it by 12. And that can be helpful for filling out the form. If you show that you have quite a bit excess income to your expenses, your inability to pay waiver will most likely be rejected. So once you have your inability to pay, your petition, and your order all filled out and ready to go, you can print those off, and then there is an additional step, which is that fingerprint card. What you're going to need is a printed fingerprint card, and you can get those at Identigo. Identigo is the state-approved fingerprinting service, and you can make appointments online through their website. The cost is about $22. And you're going to need that printed fingerprint card, and not all locations do those. But when you make the appointment, you're going to put in what service that you want, and Identico will show you which locations near you complete that service. The appointment itself is really quick and really easy. Make sure to bring some form of identification, but it should be a 5 to 10 minute appointment at, at the most. So once you have your petition, your order, your inability to pay waiver, and that fingerprint card, you're going to need to find who your district clerk is. Now remember, if you're filing a name change only, you're going to be filing in the county that you live in. So you're going to Google what your county name is and district clerk. They're most likely going to be at one of the courthouses in your county. When you find what courthouse that they are at, you're gonna to go to the courthouse and find their office and hand in those pieces of paper. The district clerk will be able to tell you if there is anything additional that you need. Some counties do have local forms that you will need to fill out, uh, but not a lot of them. Most of the time, it is the petition, the order, the inability to pay waiver, and the fingerprint card. If you're having trouble finding where the district clerk office is inside the courthouse, there is usually directories all around. You can also ask security, and typically there are signs pointing you towards it. After you file, the district clerk will tell you what court you are assigned to and what judge you are assigned to, and typically give you the number of the court coordinator as well as a cause number. Each county is going to have a different timeline, but you can ask the district clerk, when should I follow up on this? And that'll be the time where you can call the district court, uh, the court coordinator or the district clerk to kind of figure out where you are in the system. Typically, there are not super long wait times between filing and the signing of the order, unless there is a contested uh, inability to pay waiver. But if your inability to pay waiver is contested, you can amend it and refile it with the district clerk if you find that there was additional expenses that were not listed on the forms. Once the judge signs your order, your name is legally changed. However, your documents will not change unless you go and change them. You're going to want to go back to the district clerk or fill out a records request form to get certified copies of your order. When you get those certified copies, you're going to take them to the DMV. The DMV is going to help you change your driver's license, and after you change your driver's license, finding ways to change all of the other documents gets a lot easier. Keep in mind, your legal name will no longer match your debit cards, your banking, uh, your passport, your social security, and so try to think through the different things that you would need to change afterwards and create a plan to change them. But once that order is signed, your name is changed, and congratulations. I hope this was helpful. If you have any dif additional questions, there are a lot of different guides and um, information that you can find by Googling Texas name change. There are different sites and even government-sponsored ones that will also walk you through the process and maybe answer any questions that may correspond to your specific situation. Thank you very much.